Today, we are going to be discussing the seven phase time tracker reporting in API settings. First, one thing to note and very important, if you want your reporting up and running, healthy and up to date, you need to set up the service account. So let's head over to the service account page. And here we see that it says that please set someone from the project collection administrator user group as the service account. This is important because uh, the service account needs to be the project collection administrator in order to have access to uh, all the projects in DevOps. And that's where this privacy setting comes into play. If you check this box, you will allow access to DevOps data from restricted projects in reporting. So you would effectively be able to report on everything that's in DevOps if you check this box. Also, once you've set the user as the service account, you will need to log in as that user and authorize it for use with the time tracker. And there will be a banner at the top of the page and you will have to click authorize and you will be authorized. The service account will be authorized and you will be good to go and reporting will be functional. So let's head on over to reporting and REST API. And here we have some information here that we see. The reporting API, the API status is active because I have created a token already. We have the token expiration date. We have, this is for use, the URL for use when you want to connect to the API. And we see here that we have the current report state healthy and up to date. In case reporting is broken, what you would do is restart reporting. This would essentially restart the entire reporting and it would take a few minutes to load back up. Here we have the next schedule time, schedule update, and the last update time. So this is essentially the last time that Time Tracker updated data from DevOps. And this is the next time that it will uh, update. So let's schedule the update right now. And we see that the current port state is update scheduled. And we will see it um, once the time hits, it will update. So this is a way to speed up your updating. We have uh, articles here that you can read in the developer uh, guide. And we have the reporting API reference page, which you can open and you can get all sorts of information on our API. You can select the API version that you want to use and you have all the different things that you can do with our API described here, the endpoints that you can use, and the same for the same goes for uh, REST API. You the the documentation is on the same reference page at the top of the page, and we have the API authorization guide, which you should also read when working with the API. So now let's refresh this page and see if it has updated. And yes, it has. So last update was this time and we see that next schedule update is for the same time. Now, the last thing to go over is the tokens. So you see here, I have created a new token I will create a new token again, and then we can go to access tokens. And I can search for myself, and we can see that it was issued just now when I clicked on it, and it's valid until next year, same time. So this access token is controlled uh, on the token here on this access tokens page. It's issued by Time Tracker and it is used to get data from Time Tracker with the Time Tracker API by using Excel, Power BI, or other third party uh, applications that take data from Time Tracker using the access token. And another type of token that 
is in use that you will come into contact with is the personal access token. However, the PAT token is issued by DevOps and it is used to connect Time Tracker with DevOps only. So the personal access token is not displayed or controlled anywhere within Time Tracker. I hope this was educational and feel free to reach out to us in case of any issues.